Well, there are two main questions that I'd like to address. One is, what exactly is global refugee policy? And indeed, is there such a thing as global refugee policy? And the second, what exactly is the purpose of global refugee policy? In terms of the first question, is there such a thing as global refugee policy? I think it's a reasonably useful concept, but we would have to say that at the moment it's not a very clearly defined concept. And certainly global refugee policy does not derive from any single source. So in that respect, it might be more helpful to talk about global refugee policies rather than global refugee policy. So where exactly do these policies derive from? I would suggest there are at least three principal sources. Firstly, we can find global refugee policy embedded in the global policy statements that are issued by UNHCR, the Global UN Refugee Agency, on issues such as urban refugees, protracted refugee situations, um, natural disasters, return and reintegration, and IDP protection. Now, of course, these global policies issued by UNHCR are primarily intended to guide the day-to-day -day activities and operations of that organisation. But I'd also like to suggest that those policy statements do have a broader legitimacy and a broader influence on the way that the international refugee regime operates. The second primary source of global refugee policy that I'd like to identify is that of the conclusions adopted by UNHCR's governing body, in other words the Executive Committee, which is a body consisting now of more than 70 states. And if you look at the list of conclusions that have been endorsed and adopted over the years, they cover a very wide range of refugee-related issues. Thirdly, and perhaps a little bit more controversially, I'd like to suggest that some states, especially the key and major donor states, have what what might be described as their own global refugee policies. And here I'm thinking particularly of countries such as the United States, Canada, the UK, Australia and Norway. Now, if we look at these three different bodies of global refugee policies, those deriving from UNHCR itself, those coming from the Executive Committee and those coming from states, I think we can find quite a broad measure of consensus and compatibility between these different forms and different sources of global refugee policy. At the same time, I think we have to acknowledge that global refugee policy is a kind of contested domain and that there may be inconsistencies and disagreements uh, amongst these three different actors who produce global refugee policies. And just to illustrate that, let me give you three examples. For example, UNHCR has a very clear policy that it's developed in recent years on the right of refugees to remain in urban areas and indeed UNHCR's responsibility to find alternatives to refugee camps um, so that um, refugees are not uh, obliged to live in such situations. Now, very clearly, a country such as Kenya, which has declared its opposition to having refugees in urban areas, would not agree with that particular UNHCR global policy and indeed has tried to contest it uh, and challenge it operationally in recent months. Uh, similarly, I think if we look at um, UNHCR's policy on LGBT rights, this is clearly contested by a number of members of the Executive Committee. Uh, for example, at one stage, Egypt openly said that they would not endorse UNHCR's LGBT policy. Uh, and I think the uh, statement that they made said, we agreed to sign up to the 1951 Convention, but we never signed up to UNHCR's LGBT policy. And then finally, Australia, as we know, has recently been, policy, been um, pursuing a fairly draconian policy of offshore, offshore processing and offshore detention. And although UNHCR has been disappointingly quiet in contesting those policies, um, I think it would be fair to say that UNHCR has not actually endorsed them. So again, there's a, a degree of disagreement and contestation within the different actors who are producing global refugee policies. Let me now come on to the second of my questions, which is what exactly is the purpose of global refugee policy or global refugee policies? Now, I think it's fair to say that in, to some extent these policies are aspirational and statements of intent, but at the same time they are supposed to guide day-to-day -day operational activities relating to refugees, asylum seekers, returnees and other persons of concern. And I think that that raises a very important methodological challenge, which I don't think we've managed to resolve yet, which is how do we actually determine whether these global refugee policies have been uh, implemented and how do we assess the extent to which these policies in their implementation have had the intended and hopefully positive impact on refugees, asylum seekers and other persons of concern. And 
assessing the implementation and impact of global refugee policies, I would suggest, is one of the key challenges awaiting us in the future.